of the brand new Midnight Oil video, Truganini. But before we show it to you, last week Midnight Oil launched their long-awaited album, Earth and Sun and Moon, on the sunny Gold Coast. Now, this includes a trek through the rainforest where Michael tells me he was attacked by a swarm of savage leeches. But luckily he survived and managed a bit of a scoop, an interview with the entire band, which apparently has never been done before on Australian television. So we started the interview with Peter Garrett taking control, as usual. Welcome to Video Smash Hits. Conducting the interview uh, this morning with Midnight Oil is myself, Peter Garrett, uh, bald lead singer. On my left, Rob Hurst, muscular drummer. On my far left, Jim Magini, enigmatic musician. And behind me, the two cowboys. Thank, exactly thanks, what thanks, I was going to say. Yeah. Yeah. A round of applause yeah. for a wonderful introduction. You, you can go home now, Mike. No, thanks yeah, very much. It's been no, terrific. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. the minute? No, no. Guys, I think Peter, pay attention. Um, Saturday I think it was you that television. said... <laughs> it's so much fun when you've been doing... You'd look, Peter, you've media. put an album out. I have. You've put an album out. Yeah. And you said that you've captured somehow the pulse of Australia. Did I say that? <laughs> that sounds terribly yeah. ridiculous. Even if you didn't, wow. it's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, look, I mean, what can I say? <laughs> That's a good thing We can go say. back to the leeches. <laughs> <it. laughs> I think he's just said it. Yeah, next question. Yeah. What about going through the songs? It seems like a definite relaxation of the band as far as going into new areas, almost a pop song, a love song. Outbreak of love, what happened there? A dark love song, Michael, uh, very dark love yes. song, yes. Uh, uh, not a Kylie Minogue sort of, you know. No, we can't expect song. a bubblegum album. No, it's not a bubblegum, it's not a bubblegum band, actually. Mm, it's more no. of a gobstopper, isn't it? <laughs> I think, I think you guys up the back now. I, I was thinking the other day. The I was thinking, as far as the yeah. band uh, stand on certain issues like the environment or the indigenous folk, how do all you how do all you get, get together the and form all the individuals form one common idea? I mean, I had the image of you all piling into a voting booth and saying, "You're not all votes for this." How, do, how does all the so individuals loud. get together? Have a band meeting or one, what? two, what extra loud? Very democratic, really, aren't we? A democratic socialist collective, and then we, we spend a lot of time in one car together, and then we beat each other up. Off. So it actually does. So it works. Violence. Yeah, it works. Democracy always works. You know, just... <laughs> okay. um, I've been to Megaphone Studios. It's a dump. But how, how did you get a, such a wonderful <laughs> album out of there? It's, I mean, it's all run down. It sounds it's great. It's a great sounding dump. Yeah. In fact, we did some demos in there. It wasn't, this record seems like it's been taking years. Um, about, about eight months ago, we went in there and we, we did some demos for the album and they sounded really good in this big old room and, and we thought, we could make a record here and it's under the flight path and there's people down there making furniture and fixing cars and we just clock on in the morning and punch your card in and make a, an album. It seemed quite natural. That's it. Uh, you, you two guitarists on the end there. Jim Martin, yeah. this uh, Renaissance Man song, you got together and started sort of thrashing out a bit of a, a tune together. Does that, ha does that happen a lot as far as writing songs? Do you guys get together and have a play and a song comes out of it or...? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, again, it's Once. like, you know, we have a, meet, <laughs> we have a meeting. <laughs> Once in nine albums. Yeah. <laughs> Once in 15 years it happened. Why is that? Most bands, the guitarists thrash out and a song happens. <clears throat> Don't look at me, I don't thrash. <laughs> Pete? You bring uh, in separate songs on cassette players and decide? Uh, look, the old songwriting process is varied, and <coughs> with Renaissance, they're just chords and riffs and things that sounded really good to us, and I think the great thing about Earth and Sun is that it's the band in the studio playing live, doing what bands sometimes ought to do, and... Uh, always ought to do. Always ought to do, and, you know, being on the other side of the glass and hearing them power into it, it was good fun. Seems like there's a lot more hope on this album than a lot of the previous work, true? There was hope on all the albums, it just you had to dig a bit deeper. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty optimistic sort of record, really. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a bit more personal too, I think, you know. People used to say, oh, the Oils don't write songs, they just write anthems, but we write personal anthems now. <laughs> personal <laughs> dark anthems. Right. Earth and Sun and Moon, <laughs> I mean, Earth and Sun and Moon will survive. Obviously that yeah. is a pretty nice sentiment there. Jim? Yes. It is. Did you get a bit embarrassed about that one and say, look, I'm, you know... Yeah, well, that was, that was actually hippie. inspired by a... Yeah, I am an old hippie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the phone. Um, <laughs> nice, nice. There was a, uh, uh, this thing called the Blue Planet, this, um, this do docker that was on TV a while ago, which was um, about the NASA astronauts. When they, just a few people who've been up 
into outer space in the shuttle or whatever and they've just been around, they look down on the continents and they were actually up there when the Gulf War was going so they could actually see the, the oil spills in the Gulf from, from that angle, from that sort of, from that distance and just getting that, the song's actually just about having that kind of perspective, looking down and not seeing the borders, not seeing, you know, just seeing the colours of the continents and the real, the, the real big picture. Mm -hmm. So yeah, hey, it's a yeah, it's a big subject. So you're ripping off on the big world tour, taking in all sorts of exotic places. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. South America, here we come. Vegas yeah. and Tweed. And you've road tested all the new material. You obviously enjoy playing it. Yeah, the good songs to play live, and it's it's very good for the band just to be able to shake it out and and throw it out there and not worry about the machines being on and just having songs that have got really good feels and good grooves to them. And your involvement with Greenpeace, you're obviously going to align that with your touring through the world. Yeah, I'll just, you know, usual <laughs> tug of war. A mere 95% of the band's entire touring <coughs> profits will now be channeled to Amsterdam. The other 5% will, will go to Rosie's, the youth refuge on the Gold Coast. Excellent. Well, on that insight, thank you very much for chatting to us. Thank Thanks, you for the, uh, Thank you for the album. It's a wonderful album, and have a great tour. Thanks, Thanks very much. much.